The one with Joey's Portia is the fifth episode of the sixth season of Friends. This is directed by Gary Harverson, and as always, there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode and share some thoughts. And that is the first time in my 32 years that I have ever pronounced it Portia. And I did some research into this, by which I mean I watched a couple of Portia ads. It's very difficult for me to not say Porsche. And a couple of ads I found do pronounce it Portia. So I'm going to have to try and stick with that. I also watched this adorable Porsche ad where this kid goes into this dealership and asks if they've seen the new, if they've got the new 911. And it's just absolutely adorable, totally irrelevant, but they pronounced it Porsche. So if I do pronounce it Porsche, as Ross does at one point, I do apologize. But it is very difficult for me to go from saying Porsche for however many years to Porsche. But Either way, it's a really great episode. And as always, there are various parts of the narrative and I will talk about each part in turn. And part of it focuses, of course, on Joey. And I'll talk about that part just now. But actually, very briefly, we get some movement with Rachel and where she's going to be moving. Denise is out of town until December 26th. And Rachel is going to be staying with Phoebe until then, which is quite sweet. And that's basically all we get from Rachel's moving. But we do get some with Rachel and Ross. But that's my favourite part of the episode. So I'll talk about that last. With regards to Joey, Joey finds some car keys in Central Park. And he decides to go and just find the car and leave a note on it. Now, granted, I can't imagine there are many Porsches parked around near Central Park. But at the same time, was he just trying the car keys in the car? Did they have beep beep keys in, in when this was released? Or were they the type of keys where the only way to unlock it was to put the key in the door? I genuinely have no idea. But it was a little bit strange that he was just going to find a Porsche and assume it was the right car. And... Nobody comes near the Porsche or gets in touch with him. So he decides he's going to wash it because he's getting a lot of attention from women for owning this car or seemingly owning this car. And he does. He washes the car. And then the guy who owns the car comes along. And I will say credit to the guy for being quite cool and calm about it. If I owned a car, particularly a very expensive car, and some stranger was just washing it, I would be... I'd be concerned. It would be a very strange moment. But he took the keys and off he went. And Joey is unhappy about this. So he decides to dress up in Porsche clothing. And he pretends that he has a Porsche. He ends up putting a load of boxes under a sheet. So people think that he has this car. And <laughs> Ross comes along at one point and talks about the Porsche. To which Joey replies, it's Porsche. Which, to be honest, is probably the first time I ever became aware that there was an alternative, or I guess correct, pronunciation of, of Porsche, Porsche. Because it, I guess up until that point, I'd only ever heard people say Porsche. Most people in the UK will say Porsche. And I now realise that, that that's incorrect. And Joey's response uh, was rather brilliant. And I thought it was a, a fun part of the episode. Phoebe asks Monica and Chandler to look after the triplets, but actually they end up looking after them with Phoebe. We have this great moment where they're all lined up and they're all taking their turn with what they're doing, changing the diapers and things. Chandler, really sweetly, goes to get a toy for the children. It's not age appropriate and they could swallow something. And this becomes apparent when Chandler swallows the sonic blaster gun. He was trying to prove that it is age appropriate and very clearly it wasn't. And one of my favourite lines in this is when Monica says, this whole time we were concentrating on the babies and no one was watching Chandler. Monica takes Chandler to the hospital to make sure there are no issues because this sonic blaster gun is lodged in his throat and Phoebe is left with the triplets on her own. And then baby Leslie goes missing. She climbs into a drawer. Phoebe turns her back. The other babies are missing. It's very chaotic. And when <laughs> when Monica and Chandler come back in, the apartment is a mess. And I really loved what Chandler did in this moment. Because Phoebe was really pleased with how she would looked after the triplets on her own. And Monica said, but my apartment, to which Chandler responded, was the setting of Phoebe's triumph. And they do this for a few lines. And then Monica realises that she can turn things around. And she tells Chandler, 
yes, let's celebrate this because this is what it's going to be like when I have, when we have babies, when will that be? <laughs> and Chandler, without missing a beat, turns around and says to Phoebe, Phoebe, will you take a look at this mess? Which I, I liked. I thought that exchange was very believable and very well done. And then we come to Ross and Rachel and they try and get the annulment. They go to see the judge, played by the wonderful Conchata Farrell. And Rachel ends up telling the judge that Ross was gay and addicted to heroin to try and get the annulment. <laughs> and Ross responds, when we were dating, we consummated like bunnies, which is a pretty brilliant quote. And they don't get the annulment. They have to get a divorce. And then we have this really beautiful scene in Ross's apartment. Rachel earlier in the episode said that she still had some boxes of Ross's. So she's at the apartment packing up some of the things that she'd initially taken over when she thought she was going to be moving in. And Ross pointed out to Rachel that, yes, he did handle this badly, but she'd done some stupid stuff as well. And he lists off a few things. And she says, I did those things because I was in love with you. And Ross says, right. As if to say, yes, well, it's the same situation with me. Of course, he realizes what he said and quickly tries to cover things up. But it was very obvious to us as the viewer and also to Rachel that he is still in love with her. And Rachel, realising this, tries to soften the moment and make Ross feel better because obviously he just basically admitted to still being in love with her by admitting that she was the one who suggested they get married. Ross wanted to eat a lot of grapes. She thought it would be a fun idea to get married. So they were going to get married and then eat a lot of grapes. And Ross and Rachel realised that they're getting a divorce and that hits pretty hard considering they both at one point thought they'd be together forever and then in the blink of the eye they're married and divorced and it's a it's a moving emotional moment in the saga that is Ross and Rachel and I think they handled it very very well the one with Joey's Portia is a really brilliant episode personal highlights Honestly, I don't know. I think just Chandler in general, Chandler's behaviour in this. Obviously, that's final scene with Ross and Rachel. And, well, the final Ross and Rachel scene. And Joey was really good fun as well. It's a solid episode. The one with Joey's Portia is a pretty fantastic episode of Friends.